barometric equations can be a little bit scary. Let's just start off and think about, well, anything obvious that we can do. Well, look, sine 2t. So that's 2 sine cos. So if I just change this, let's just put in there, so that'll end up being 10 um, sine t cos t. Okay, now we want to integrate this. So let's just have a little thing. There's a little trick that we can apply here. So if you think about, we want, normally we'd integrate whatever y is. I right? obviously don't normally write y, but whatever y is equal to, and you do that with, with respect to x. So little trick, because I've got x equals, got y equals, and I've got these t things. Here you go. Oh, but look at this. There we go. There's another clue down here, look. It mentions dt here. So let's have a little think about, well, what's the only real thing here I need to work out is what's dx over dt. I've got x equals 6 sine t. So dx over dt equals, that's going to be um, uh, 6 cos t. There we go. So now let's just drop this information into here and see where we are. So we've got, it's just going to be these two things multiplied together. So that's y is 10 sine t cos t and dx over dt is 6 cos t and all of that is with respect to t. Tidy this up. What have we got? 10 times 6. 60, and then we're going to have cos squared. Oh, look, it's looking just like this down here. So sine t cos squared. There we go. Now, the only other thing, other thing that we need to do is we need to work out these limits. So we need to think about those two points just there, effectively, is what we're trying to work out. How are we going to work out what those points are? Now, we need them in terms of t. And we need to think about which one of these guys to go and use. It's when y is equal to zero. So the one that we're going to use is that we're going to use this one just here. So we need to show it's when y is equal to zero. Maybe let's write that in there. And then, oops, sine 2t. Divide through by the 5. So in other words, it's when sine 2t is equal to zero. And that will give you values of t equal to 0 and pi over 2. So you can put those in there. And that's what we were looking for. Okay. So first part out of the way. That's done. Now remember, you can still do the rest of the question, even if you haven't managed to do that. It was show that. So therefore, we could still attempt the next bit of the question. So the next bit of question is... And show that algebraic integration. Now, yeah, right, okay. So, how on earth do we integrate this? Well, let's think backwards differentiation, okay? So, this probably is probably the best way of doing this. So, if you think to yourself, well, what would you differentiate that might contain a bit of this in the answer? It's cos cubed, okay? There we go. So, if you were to think about differentiating that, so if you were doing uh, just a bit of chain rule here, what would you get? You would end up getting, well, if you differentiate, you'd have 3, and then you'd be minus, going to get a minus sign in there as well, aren't you? So you're going to have minus sine x. Now, you might need to do, you might actually need to do that chain rule there, okay? So it's just chain rule, um, but that's what you end up with. Whoops, just going right through it, haven't I? Right. So how's that helping us? Well, if I integrate this, I get this. Then I don't want to integrate that. I want to integrate this. So I'm integrating something that's minus 20 times as big. So therefore, the answer to this must be minus 20 cos cubed x. Put the limits around it pi over 2, 0. Put these values into here, and you'll end up getting, uh, you'll get 0, and then take away minus and minus 0 goes in there. 
So then that equals 20 units. All right. So there we go. So there's part two done. All right. So it's, it's just helpful if you can recognize this here. All right. OK. So now let's go and have a look at the last bit of the question. Now, at first glance here, it looks really quite scary. But it's not so bad. You need to think about what you're actually trying to work out. Right? You've got all the information down here. Basically, you're trying to work out the distance from there to there. Okay? So you want to know when is this equal to 4.2. Okay? It's when y is equal to 4.2. That's what we're interested in. And y is equal to 4.2. And then it'll give me these two values, the two x values here. Right, so let's see what happens. So let's go, so 4.2 equals 5 sine 2t. So divide by the 5, get 0.84 equals sine 2t. Inverse sine, so 2t equals 0.997. Now, there's another value, isn't there? Okay, so think about sine. Think about how sine works. There's another value. If you think about sine, look, sine goes like this. So we've worked out the one over here. We need to work out the one over there. So it's going to be, so that value is pi take away that value just there. And if you do that, that gives you 2.144 and some other stuff. All right, so divide them both by t, uh, by 2, sorry, and that'll give you 0.4986, and some stuff up after that, and then this one will give you 1.072. Okay, these aren't our answers. We know what, these, what the t value is at these points. So now we need to think about, or well, remember x, x equals 6 sine t, so if we now just pop it into here, so if we pop this one in first, that will give us x equals 2.869, and then pop that one in, and that will give you x equals, let's call that x1, and x2, and that will give me 5.269. So then the distance here is this value take away this value, so 5.26. Now, the best thing that you can do with these questions is just uh, it's not ignore the context, but don't be put off by the context. Just think, right, what's the maths bit going on here? So that gives me 2.4 meters. All right, so think about the maths. Don't get put off by the context that's there. All right, just try and drum in what's it actually asking us to do.